was questioning myself whether it's maybe something that's not good for me to feel. Thursday, we are here. Come here. <laughs> you ruined our intro. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. How's he doing? Uh, he's doing good. He's doing good. Yeah. He's had a good week. Good. Um, he's had a lot of great stuff. And you know how we yeah. post, you know, on social media and everything. Well, someone had reached out to us and said that their child, um, had something similar like he or she was um, holding their breath and yeah. Or... yeah she said that the baby had many surgeries before yeah, yeah. and so when they looked into it because he was doing the breathing spells that some of the scar tissue was pressing onto his his stomach so okay. whenever he had something kind of you know it was making a lot of it was very painful for him yeah so he said that once the surgeon went inside and they looked and he fixed it, then he never did the breathing spells again after Interesting. that. Interesting. Oh. Then there's the whole, uh, he should have a trach. He needs a trach. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you look into that. Uh, I, yeah, and they're just, you know, suggestions and suggestions. Yeah. And I'm just, you know, of course, like, there's, yeah. there's some that still make sense. But it's because I just don't like seeing him like that, you yeah. know? No, I'm sorry. Uh, it's getting to where um, it's becoming too much, too often. Okay. Either it's an apnea, mm -hmm. you know, they said or maybe it'd be an out apnea, yeah. or um, if we can do an endoscopy, you know, just to see what's going on in there. I, uh, it's, you know, yeah. and neurology, neuro neurology, neurology, right? They said yeah. that it might not be that. Yeah, he, he just, didn't think it was. Anything. anything concerning his department because we were in okay. neurology like a central type of thing comes yeah. Yeah. That and everything. he just Correct. kind of said it was normal that he's seen it but i'm like and he i mean and he it has one normal. there i mean it is it's normal though. but yeah. to an extent like okay. almost every day every other day yeah. and he's like purple like completely purple and blue and just like you see you've seen, you've seen not, him right you have an you yeah, can show me yeah, okay well, no. come on nathan come on nathan bye bye Nathan! I know. Mondo! <gasps> there you go. Can you see? See that? Yes, I mean. Does he get. Like during the episodes, is his belly getting bloated? Is he getting um, gassy during the episode? He gets episodes? stiff, though. Yeah, he gets stiff. Sometimes, not all the time, sometimes he when he's lose. doing them, like, when he's coming back, he's like, he's like and when he goes like, oh, like oh. he will release a lot of gas okay. or he will poop. That's not all the time. Oh, okay. While he's holding it, like, yeah, he's while holding, he's holding it, it. He, yeah. a lot of releases. And that's what she was saying that her son would do that. She would, he would have bowel movements during yeah. the episode, and that's why I would told her, well, he does that sometimes, yeah. so... Um, and sometimes I could just be triggered by him just being mad, yeah. and that he's like, you know, there's something stuck, and he's trying to get it out, huh. and then he just can't, so okay. then he just gets mad, and then it turns into him holding his breath. Okay. That's what he did on Saturday, I think it was. Okay. Yeah, and he only had one. But he was like, really, and then once I suctioned him on everything, then he was fine. Like he fell asleep. Okay. So it just it just depends on what yeah. can trigger it. What's going on? Interesting. How is he pooping on a normal day to day? Good. Is he? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty regular. Okay. Do you feel like the erythromycin helped? Um, I, I mean, I want to say yes. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. He he's been regular. I okay. mean, he'll go at least twice a day. Okay. And they're pretty. You know, fairly large amount. Okay. Soft? Soft. Yeah. 
stuff, yeah. Okay. So like um, kind of like a watered down Nutella. <laughs> okay. It's like still thick, but not watery. Like pudding too. or more than that? Um, I would say a little less than pudding. Okay. Like applesauce. Kind of. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. He's trying to make trying to like. This is one of the first ones. That's why we're all panicking because we didn't yeah. know what was going on. Oh, I'm sorry. It seems uncomfortable. <laughs> How long did that go on for? Uh, they last a minute. They last a minute. Okay. It acts like he's in pain. I mean, it's not just like he's sitting there not doing anything, not breathing. It's like he squinties his eyes like he's almost in pain. Yeah. Finally, he just passed out. And then when he passed out, then he just came back to me. Really? So then he, he just, just kind of passed he out? He just passes time. out from it after mm -hmm. that. It's, you know, it's always a question whenever we have surgery yeah. on a kid. You know, you're going in, you're cutting things, you're, you know, changing things. There's a risk for scar tissue. and. I mean, there always is a risk, you know, to get scar tissue. It kind of changes the angle of, you know, how your bowel's going. Are you going to get a place that intermittently obstructs? And sometimes it is just an intermittent type of thing, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you know, I've had kids post-surgical where, you know, it seems like they aren't having intermittent obstructions and we kind of need to change how we're doing things with the diet so we don't yeah. get, you know, big buildups up above. And so yeah. um, I, I think it's a reasonable thing to at least look at to see, okay. you know, is there any signs that would be a concerning point. Yeah, because you know? she did ask about, like, the spitting up. And I told her sometimes, not often, like he will spit up like that, you know, like greenish, yellowish. Yep. And I no, told her like, I, I told her, honestly, anytime that he does that, I take a picture. And when we see Dr. Worland, I'm yeah. like, okay, like uh, this day he did this. And yeah. he's like, no, it's normal. Yeah. And she's like, well, it is. She goes, but it could mean that something. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, all I know is that yeah. they told us if it's, it has to do with anything inside him, if it's like constant, like he's doing it like all day, yeah. then take him in for something to worry about. And she's like, well, if he's doing that, it could mean that there's something. And I was like, well, then I was like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. You know, green usually is like more of a... stomach acids, right? Well, green is more going to be bile. Okay. Um, so after you get out of your stomach, and so coming down into the esophagus, going into your stomach, you have your pylorus, which is with the outlet of the stomach, and then we're going into the small intestine. And so... Um, your gallbladder, which is up here by your liver, comes down and it joins right about here after it meets up with your pancreas. And so um, bile, which is the green, is going to happen after the stomach. Okay. And so you have this little muscle called the pylorus that kind of controls the rate of um, how you get stuff out of the stomach. And that usually prevents a whole lot of the bile coming back into the stomach. Okay. We're anatomically having a little bit of difference with him because we have the tube that actually is stenting open that pylorus. And so right. kids that have the GJ, we we think that we can get some of that bile to reflux into the stomach. As long as it's okay. just little bits yeah. and stuff, we don't get as concerned. If we're just getting straight green, though, we do get concerned. Is there like an obstruction downstream that's making everything just back oh, up? Yeah. You know? okay. And so little bits I'm not as concerned about, but still with his history... I think it's reasonable to at least check out to make sure that anatomically everything is just flowing through like it needs to. Okay. is just stop breathing so when we oh. say you go apneic that means that you're not breathing ah. so um you know like a central <laughs> apnea is where you know the brain isn't telling yourself to breathe oh. as opposed to like an obstructive where if you just have like you know something that's closing off making you not breathing that would be another type of apnea and so it's just different sources of why someone could go apneic i see yeah and there's, there's different ways to yeah. test that um yes yeah, I think the sleep study lets them know a lot about, you know, what it's looking like. You know, what happens. Mm -hmm. Even when he's not having That he didn't have any uh, I'm not sure what that so was. I'm just, hard to tell by based of course, on that one. Of course. But I, if he's not vomiting at the time of these breath holes... You well, know, he does... He will... Um, he will cough like, up stuff. Cough and, like, spit up Every after. time or just... Um, Usually every time after he does that, he... 
Yeah. But it's so hard to tell because he does that in the in, in, the, in, the, in the normal. He, you know right. What I'm that's what I'm saying. I'm trying to figure out if it's more of a, a gut ish related issue or yeah. it could be neurologic issue. But right. Sometimes we went to neurology and they said he no. Think it's, he yeah. just doesn't think he thinks it's, it's more GI problems. Yeah. Because sometimes when he is holding his breath and he's doing these, like, he'll let out a lot of gas or he'll do, like, a huge bowel movement. Okay. All right. I'll show you the video. I wish I had an answer for you. I don't. I know. For that right, right. Let's take a look at him. <laughs> he's already into a minute there and he's, like, bald. Like, purple, basically. Do you try to venting him at the time to see if that helps? We yes, tried that. We did Does do it that. make a difference? No. Is there anything in there? Mm -hmm. Gas uh, or fluid? I think just because he puts minimal. a lot of pressure, like it just kind of comes up. Because like he's, it seems like he's putting, like, like his stomach goes hard. So I don't no. know if it's just like pressure that's... But it's not like a big pop-off ever. No. No, no, no. And not a lot of fluid either. No. no. It's just very little. Huh. I'm not sure. <laughs> I wish I could figure it out. <laughs> You're a mystery, Nathan. I'm gonna move it this way a little bit, buddy. Okay. Doing a fundo is a big deal in him. It's not a small yeah. deal. Yeah. yeah. And it may require an open operation, I suppose, a laparoscopic concern, and experiences your malrotation and everything. And so, you didn't want to do that in the beginning. Why? Because it's malrotation. Because, because two of the reasons. malrotation. Okay. Many patients with reflux resolve on their own, mm -hmm. just infants. And two, the malrotation can also cause the same problems. Right. If you want to just take care of that problem, you know that's a problem. Yeah. Be a problem. Okay. So yeah, I would never marry a fundo at that point. Got it. Okay. Because they asked me that too. No. You know, people have an taste. We know that's yeah. an issue, but the um, reflux many times that resolves. Obviously, it not, not, may not resolve in him. But I'm just telling you that's why I don't do it so fast. Right. Is there anything that we, should, that we should look out for as far as for his now rotation now that the, the lab procedure was done and all that? Like, no, I told you a long time ago that even after a last procedure that you could still have problems, and you know that you know. Remember we talked about the twisting or this. Yes. That's one of the reasons you do. But is that impossible to have now? No, because we have seen it happen even after. Even that's the reason to do it. Sometimes it gets, or more commonly, it's just the scarring and, and obstruction and blockage, right, from mm -hmm. scar tissue. Right. How would you know that? Bile vomiting. Bile come out of the G2. That's what right. you should know. More of the acute twisting would be just an acute episode where he's just acting really sick and distended and having bile come out. Okay. So it's, it's more bile vomiting, bile coming out of the G2 that you have to be concerned about. Okay. Okay? Just look for that. Then. Okay. That's what you'd look for. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay? Yeah. Um, but um, in terms of, you know, trying the feet and stomach and all of that, you know, yeah, I'm not sure we're going to wait till I'm trying to figure out this other spell issue first, and then once that calms down, maybe can try feeding him in the stomach and see how that goes. Okay. And if you're still having issues with that, we can consider at some point doing a fundo or thinking yeah. about it. You know, back um, to the, the breathing yeah. spells, I mean... I know we're going to be doing some testing for that. We're going to do the sleep apnea. Yes. We're going to do the... Like the wand or the... Yeah. Do yeah. And then the, the endoscopy. What do you think about doing that to see what's going on? This thing? Would there well, be any way that... I, I would leave that on? because that's his area, not yeah. mine. I'm going to leave that to him. <laughs> I okay. really don't even have an opinion on that. Okay. I'm trying to wrap my head around this whole connection thing. But he may have more familiar than I do with that. Okay. So I'll be just giving a non-informed opinion you know. to you. You don't want that. Yeah, 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 got it. Okay. Alright, my battery's dying, so... Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay, so we're done. Um, I'm gonna go back out to the car, go home. And I guess since the battery's dying, we can just go ev go over everything when we get home? Yeah. Alright. All right. Can you open the door for me? Yeah. What's up, everybody? Hey. We are now sitting down. It is Saturday morning. This appointment that took place was very important, as you guys know. We have been posting on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. 
And we ask everybody to pray along with us because we are wanting answers. So we're going to talk about that appointment and kind of what happened, what went down. I'm trying to avoid the um a lot. So if I'm talking like a robot, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to think before I say empty words. The surgeon. The surgeon is very important issues that he brought up last week. Nathan's pediatrician brought up that Nathan's testicle was not being found, the left one. That was a concern to her, so she brought it up. We saw the surgeon. He tried to look for it, and he couldn't find it either. And he noticed that his sac was not developed. At his age, it should be fully developed. It brought on a couple of issues, and we're going to talk about those. For example, he says that a normal kid at his age, they should be fully developed, and by this time, there shouldn't be any fertility issues. But since Nathan has not developed and haven't dropped, chances are for fertility go really down. And that's what he was explaining to us. However, in the vehicle, me and Pam talked about it after the appointment, I had made the exception, or I had accepted that Nathan was not going to have kids then because of everything that he has, the diagnosis, all the symptoms. I already made the choice and I finally came to accept that Nathan was not going to be a father as much as it hurt me to accept that. And Pam told me the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. This is something that needs to be brought up because of special needs families that follow us and not special needs families that follow us. How do we view that? How does that affect you to know that you won't be a grandparent, you know, that you won't have grandchildren? I think uh, it's painful. It's hard to accept. But it's something that needs to be talked about. And I think we're going to do a video about that. A full-on video on how we feel about that. Okay, but anyways, back to the back to the, the doctor's conversation. He also brought up one thing. He said that usually whenever the kid's testicles don't drop like this, um, there's a higher chance of having cancer. Was so it that's later on down the road. Testicular yes. cancer, testicular right? Cancer. Yes. And that's something that's later on down the road, like I was going to say. It's not something that we're worrying about right now. And he said that he was just trying to let us know just to be prepared. You know how doctors do that. But... I think with everything else that's going on with Nathan's issues, it didn't really catch my attention and I don't really want to put energy into it. However, that's what he said. So I'm explaining and summarizing everything he said. He did suggest for us to try to feed him again by mouth, which is something that I did not want to do. The reason why I didn't want to go forward with that is because of his breathing spells. And I told him, because of the breathing spells, I wouldn't want to give him anything because during his, his swallow study, he did pass it. However, when he was eating that puree. Yeah, it was like a paste puree type of. He was having a lot of trouble <clears throat> swallowing that. He swallowed it, but it took a long time. And he gets very angry. <laughs> Nathan's a very angry baby. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like to be bothered or Anything in his mouth, he just does not like yeah, it. As soon as I put, like, when I clean his lips and I put, put the chapstick on them, he doesn't like it. Yeah, so... So anything near his lips is just not good. <laughs> so because he already has these breathing spells whenever he cries, we don't want to irritate that and have a chance of him aspirating him having a breathing spell we're trying to feed him however we're not going to say no however i want to get these breathing spells under control before we try this that is how i feel 
I don't know about Pam how she feels, but no, I feel the same. That's where we kind of ended up that at that point. Is that it from him? Mm -hmm. So as far as the breathing spells, oh, yeah. um, he's going to leave that to the GI, mm -hmm. since he would be the one um, putting in the orders for the test and everything. Although the GI and the surgeon, um, I'm sure it's like this with all their kids, but I know when it also comes to Nathan, that they communicate a lot about Nathan's care. So many times GI sees Nathan, you know, he'll kind of like, I'm assuming he'll email the surgeon like, you know, at some point like, okay, this is the update on Nathan, this is this, this is that. Um, so even though we don't see the surgeon as often, um, GI keeps him up to date with a lot of things regarding Nathan. So, um... Anything that happens during the procedure, um, you know, he'll be notified and everything. So there's three tests that we're going to be doing for Nathan. I want you guys to remember this. The sleep study is going to be done on Nathan to see if it's some form of sleep apnea. We're going to do an endoscopy. And we're going to see a cardiologist. Cardiologist hasn't been put in place yet. Yeah, but we're trying to do that. His doctors don't seem to want to go forth with that because they don't think it's that. However, one of our nurses that's here constantly says it's it could be it would be a good idea to try that. And I have read from several comments from the TikTok community that some kids that do have breathing spells, it has to do with the heart. So because of Nathan's previous hole in the heart, I want to make sure that that's not an issue. So we're going to move forward with that. Okay? Okay. Anything else? Nope. You pretty much covered everything. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, there you go with um again. We were talking, me and Pam, about the breathing spells and how when he has them, I feel like now I feel numb to it. And I wonder, and I was questioning myself whether it's maybe something that's not good for me to feel. Because while he's having one, I tell Pam it's fine. Pam, relax. I, it's he's gonna be fine. And Pam, it's hard for me to sh explain to you guys what she feels, but I can see a lot of like worry in her eyes and in her whole body. And I started to question why I'm not feeling that. And he. To that point anymore I feel like I've taken the role as uh, trying to like calm her down versus you know I don't know what that what that is or what I call that but I feel like maybe I'm just trying to just control the situation so it doesn't get you know but what I'm trying to say is that it's not normal for Nathan to have these so many times for me to start feeling like that's okay and telling her that. That's why we need to find answers immediately because that's not something that he should be going through. I don't know if you guys have ever been winded, but when you get punched in the stomach or and you're trying to breathe, it's a horrible feeling. It's a horrible feeling. And for him to have so many of these, it's, it's not good. So we're hoping that these tests can bring out some answers. We thank everybody who prayed with us in the Instagram post. It means a lot. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you guys for praying along with us. And we'll see where this takes us. I'm done. <laughs> Let's roll in the shout outs for the week.
when I get shout out in our next YouTube video, all you guys have to do is subscribe, turn on post notifications, and comment something positive down below. All right, and as my family always says, remember, you are auspicious. auspicious. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.